I'm Sean Lee with Moonglow Technologies. Today I'll be going over the All Sky Cam. Comes in a simple box like this. It's available in NTSC or PAL. And when you pull it out of the box, it'll look like this. Now this camera is, like it says, an All Sky Cam, so you can see the entire sky down to the horizon all the way around. And it'll work in any kind of weather, you know, the sunny, rainy, snowy uh, at nighttime. And what you, the purpose of this camera is to be able to see the weather patterns, whether is it you know, about to rain at your observatory, um, but it also has cool features like uh, you can see fireballs at night, so it's very sensitive. Not only can you record live video, but if you get the uploader kit or the bundle, which come with this kit, this will convert it to USB. And with USB, then you can load it onto the computer and see your image you know, live on the computer, or you can record an image every 30 seconds, every minute, which for the clouds, for the weather, that's actually really nice. If you just record live video here, you're going to get about 13 gigabytes an hour, which, you know, not many people have that kind of storage capability. Uh, but if you video, you know, one, once a minute you take an image, then you can build up a nice video of the entire day's clouds going by. You can also see what the weather is all day. Now, I will show you later in the software, there's some really cool features about, you know, observing each day. It, it breaks each day down into a small um, spectrum, if you will, of clear and cloudy spots. And you can see when, what time of day it was clear or what time of day it was cloudy just by looking at a, a graph on the screen. So I'll show you that in a few minutes. Now, when you pull the uh, camera from the box, it'll have a BNC connector end like this. Now, if you have a BNC video system you want to hook it up to, then it's ready to go. Or if you do want to record live video, you can hook this into the back of your uh, recorder if you have BNC. Now we do include a, an adapter from BNC to RCA. So you just put it on there and twist, and now you have an RCA output. We also include a 25 foot cable, because um, most likely this is not going to be near your computer. So you can run this cable from your camera back to your computer or to back to your recording device. So, now, this also comes with a 110 volt power supply, or 220 depending on what country you're in. Uh, it will actually come looking like this. There will be no, no attachment here. But uh, included in it will be the adapters for every country in the world. But since we're in the U.S., we'll use the U.S. adapter. And that simply angles in here and snaps, oops, angles out, sorry, and snaps into place. Okay. And now you're ready to go. So you'll plug this into the wall, this end, plug into here okay. and then this into your recording device or if you have purchased the uploader kit or the entire package you'll come with a converter to USB and I've got that right here okay, yeah. okay that's this cable here you see a yellow attachment and a black attachment this black attachment is not for power this is for S video, if you have an S video input, which is not applicable to this kit, kit, it's just there in case you need it. So what you want to do is use the yellow end, plug it into this at yellow end, like so. So now they're attached. Plug this into the wall for power to the camera, and plug this end into the computer. And you're set up. Now we do have additional options because you, you want to if you want to mount this outside, which most people will. We have a mounting option. I have one just here that we were playing with. This is a a simple mounting bracket, just like you would use on your t your TV dish, you know, small satellite dishes. And the camera will mount right over the end, like like this. Now the wires, what you'll do. Because you don't want to jam the wires in the edge. You want the wires to go down inside, just like you do with, with a satellite dish. Okay. So you would run the long cable, thread it through the bottom here, all the way up to the top, attach it to your camera outputs, and stuff it inside before placing the camera over the end and tightening the two screws here. Now, another option 
if you live in a very humid climate, a uh, climate where you're going to get lots of dew or um, condensation, then you also want to purchase the dew heater. Okay. Now this comes with the, the complete kit, but if you order them separately, you have to order this all separately. So, yeah, when you get this, it'll look just like this. You'll have uh, power in and power out, so you're going to put it in line with your camera. Okay. Let me show you that. Got a mess of cables here now. <laughs> So I've got the power output from my power pack. That'll go into here. And then this will go into the camera's power input. All right, and then this will begin to heat if necessary. Now, how to put the heater on the camera? You want to do it when this is warm at room temperature. Don't try to do this when it's you know, freezing outside because the plastic will get hard. So you want it to be warm room temperature, you know, 68 degrees, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, about 20 degrees Celsius. Okay. And you can even stretch it a little bit. Let me show you. you can even stretch it a little bit like, you know, like this. Right. And then that, it will simply slide over the top. Okay. I want to use all my fingers to try and slide it down. To place the heater on the sky cam, simply place it over the top like this and use as many fingers as you can get around there and ease it on down. And that's about as far as you want to go right there. There's no reason to push it all the way down. The area you want to heat is at the top because the camera is up here. There's nothing down here that's worth heating. So it looks a little odd, but you want to keep it near the top. Remember glass is a good insulator, so the heat won't travel far. So at the top here, it'll keep this dome crystal clear. Now, if you need to take it off, same thing. You just try and apply as much even pressure as you can. Okay. What you don't want to do is apply pressure to one side, you know, try and force it at an angle, okay. and don't force it all the way down. Okay. This can actually crack the glass or, or break the glass. So just be very careful with that. Okay. All right, next we'll go on and uh, I'll show you what we can do on the computer with this and all the software options. I want a tip for all you tinkerers out there. Um, don't try to remove this glass dome. This is a sealed environment in here, and the air pressure will not let you pull this off. If you pull this off, you will most likely break this glass. So don't don't even try. You have the seal around here, the rubber seal, and that gets harder over time, so it'll get more and more difficult to pull this off. Plus, it actually is sealed from the bottom. And the reason we seal that is because we don't want moisture inside. If, this, if you are, are able to remove this, moisture will get inside and the camera will from then on have moisture on the glass inside and your camera won't perform very well. Plus, your, mo your camera will then from then on be exposed to moisture continuously. So, we ask that you do not remove this dome. Okay. Alright, the next step is to simply load the software onto the computer. It'll come with a CD-ROM like this. So, I'm going to load this on the computer. I simply place it in my CD-ROM drive. Okay, to load the software, if it doesn't come up automatically, just double click on my computer and on your CD-ROM drive and it will come up with something like this. So you want to install all three of these before rebooting your computer. Alright, once you have the software installed, you want to go to the start menu here and go up to ASC lo Uploader. Um, for those of you that didn't have a computer on your desktop, there's uh, the computer button there. All right, so let's go ahead and open up, open up the ASC loader. Okay, so as you can see, it's working. I can see 180 degree plus field of view. And I just have it sitting on the desktop, so it's going to wobble back and forth a little bit. All right, let's go through the some of the features here. So you have this feature, which makes it like a widescreen. That one's pretty cool. That's the panoramic image. And that's the, the raw view. This makes it uh, seem like it's a normal camera, just facing up. Okay. And here would be the right ascension and declination, like the, when you're looking at the sky. 
Okay. Now, now this sliver here is one sample taken um, just now, but as time goes on, these slivers will build up to create a picture of the entire day. And by looking at these slivers, you can see well, if one's blue, then that's blue sky. If they're white, then it's it's cloudy. So by looking at that and the the time. Uh, you can tell what time of the day it was clear and what time it was cloudy. And um, I'll see if I can f let me see if I can find a, a file that shows that. So now this guy here, this is your um, light detection. So this will detect um, boloids or um, fireballs going across the sky. So if anything bright will leave a streak, and the, the camera will pick that up. All right, let's go through these buttons at one at a time here. We've got the file. Of course, you have save still here, which is I want to save a still image, so I can go like that and save that image. And then it you know, asks you where to save that. We won't actually do that right now. And then uh, here's the uh, word format, same as these guys here. These are the, the button format. So you got the, you know, the panorama, uh, the reprojected, Right ascension declination map. Um, the summary of the day, you can see that it's now built up uh, two lines. And the image stack where you're looking for any kind of bright uh, meteor or um, fireballs or anything, that kind of thing. You also have a little planetarium on here so you can see what the sky looks like right now. So if you are taking a video at night, you can reference that to this sky image. And that works on you know, the normal map or the panoramic. So you can adapt it to whatever uh, view you're using at the time. And this is your directions, north, south, east, west. Oh, let me turn, the, let me turn this off. So if I put this on, see now you get south, west, east, north. OK. okay. If you're seeing a dark area on the bottom, such as this, then you you need to go to Settings, Image Center, and you'll come up with this red uh, crosshair here. And you can see that the center is off center. It's too far to the west here. So I'm going to go up here to move left. And I'm going to move this uh, to the left and center it as best as I can. And then uh, I'm going to move it up slightly too. Uh, maybe that's about right. Okay, so I've centered the image. I hit apply. Okay, now let's go back and look at our uh, widescreen, and you can see, oh, it's gone. That's taken care of. So again, that's uh, right here under image center. Okay. Longitude and latitude is pretty self-explanatory. You can uh, put in your longitude and latitude. If you don't have any idea what it is, you can guess from your IP address, which means um, your, your internet provider will give you an IP address that assigns you, and it can guess from that information. It's pretty close, usually. So, All right. Um, so orientation, we can uh, change the orientation of the, uh, the camera. You should, when the camera, when you install the camera, it actually has a north written on one side. So you should face that north. But you know, if it's off by a, a few degrees, you can change that here, okay? Instead of having to adjust the camera with a small angle. All right, under here, under settings, uh, let's go to uh, hot pixel removal. So, when you're looking at the camera in the daytime, like this, you know, the hot there's uh, pix hot pixels on it, but you won't see anything because it's so bright. So, to find the hot pixels to remove for nighttime um, video. You know, the hot pixels can look like stars, so we want to eliminate those. So I'll just take the camera. Oh, oops. i got to take my live image. I'm going to take the camera, and I'm going to put the camera in the drawer. And close the drawer. Oops. And it looks uh, nice and dark. Okay. All right, now I'm going to go over to hot pixel removal. And here's a picture of it in the dark. And you can see there's a hot pixel there, hot pixel there. This camera has a lot of hot pixels. That's why it was rejected and not actually sent out. That's why I'm now playing with it. 
Um, but all of her cameras will have hot pixels as Sony makes the chips and every one of them has hot pixels. So, um, but if they have too many like this one, we, we won't send that out. So now, if I want to actually select these, I just click on them and you'll see the little red circles appear. Okay, like so. this up so you can see. Okay, there. And if you're clicking the hot pixel and you realize, oh, that's not a hot pixel, you can just right click on it and it will go away. So if you make a mistake, just right click to correct it. Okay. And that actually uh, says it at the bottom of the screen here too. All right, so now I've eliminated uh, most of the hot pixels on this guy. So let's hit OK. Okay, and you can see the hot pixels have disappeared. Okay. Now it'll take, uh, sometimes it'll take up to three or four seconds for it to show the next image for dis to, that it, they have disappeared. Um, when it's in the dark, the camera takes longer exposures than during the daytime, so that, that gives it more sensitivity. Okay. The next feature I want to show you here is uh, privacy settings. So say you have this mounted out on your shed looking at the sky, but your bathroom is nearby. <laughs> you obviously don't want that on the screen. So you can do a privacy mask and simply select, uh, I'll select large and say, um, I don't want this microphone to show. So I'll just blot that out. Okay. And this, this is for when you upload to the internet. You don't want people to see, to see that. Yeah, they sh you just want them to see the sky. Okay, so you just hit OK. All right, the next thing we want to talk about is the All Sky Cam uploading. Okay, so if you go here to uploads, you'll see there's allskycam.com. Uh, you click on that, you'll see uh, here that uh, you have uh, some choices like this normal low bandwidth deluxe. Uh, low bandwidth is if, say, you have a satellite where you're getting, you're paying for your bandwidth. Um, you can use that, or if you have really high bandwidth, you can use, you know, use this here. You can also change the interval, uh, five minutes up to six hours per upload. Okay. Now, if you just go through here and you click enable and, oh, I'm sorry, not yet. If you want to click. Uh, Set up, uh, set up more options on the website. It'll bring up the website, okay, and you'll get uh, this screen, or you you can get a screen that says no images have been uploaded yet. If you get, if you get a screen that says no images are uploaded, then simply go up here and enable, okay, and then that is not the only enable. That you'll use. So let's uh, let me uh, let's get out of here. If you go under uploads here, it says disable. Click to enable. That that is a global disable. So no matter how many of these upload schedules you have going for All Sky Cam, or actually you can send it to your own website, which I'll show you in a minute. But this would disable that. So in order to enable all of them, you have to click that to enable. See now it says enabled. I'm going to disable it because I don't need to upload my face to All Sky Cam. Okay. So let's go back to this here. So remember, you want to click this, and underneath the uploads, click the, the Universal Enable to start uploading images. <clears throat> now you have other options here, like if you want to have your labels, um, if you want to put a logo on there, you can select your own logo to put on, on your uh, uh, video. Okay. And upload the summary of the day. That's those the thin lines I showed you earlier that shows you, you know, when it was clear, when it was cloudy. You can upload those as well. Now to uh, upload to your own website, you know, if you're a professional or you, you have your own website, you can go to Custom Upload Tasks and click New. Okay, uh, Description of what you're uploading. Uh, your, here's your interval. Um, you can set that to whatever you want. And then um, down here is your information about your server. You know, the server, username, password, what folder you want to put it in, file name, that kind of thing. 
All right, so if you want to set that up, uh, you'll do that right here. Okay. All right, now if you're wondering where the uh, images are going that you're taking all the time, um, they're going to be under Archive. Okay. So if we go into Archives and we click Settings, if you look here, uh, here's Archive Folder. You can select what folder you want to put it in, create a new folder, um, put it wherever you like. Okay. And then here we have um, Archiving Interval how often you want to actually take a picture and archive it. Okay, you can archive the raw frames, the panoramas, the reprojected images, you know, which whatever you like. <clears throat> and summary of the day. Okay, that's the again the where all the lines are, showing you whether it's clear or cloudy or bright or dark. Alright. Um, and here you can set it to use a maximum number of uh, disk space so it doesn't use up your entire disk. You can also purge the files older than two weeks. So if you don't want it to run forever and fill up all your hard drives, you can uh, do this and it'll delete older older files. You can also keep one image from every hour on here. That way it won't take up so much space. Also on the custom upload uh, task uh, settings here, you can if you want your file name to actually be the date, you just type that in here. So this command is uh, C for um, the date and time is the file name. So that'll automatically put the date and time every time it uploads a new image. All right, the next thing we want to look at is uh, motion detection. <clears throat> motion detection will see uh, fireballs in the sky, you know, any, any bright thing that goes by. Um, and if you want to keep a record of those, it'll, it'll automatically photograph and, key, and download that image of, of a fireball if it picks it up. Now the the video cam the camera is you know always looking at the sky, but it's only recording an image every four seconds at night because that's the uh, that's the length of the exposure. Um, now you're archiving usually once a minute something like that. But when it picks up a fireball, it'll automatically save that if you have this activated. Now you may run into problems with say you live near a road a street and as cars go by they look to the camera as a moving fireball. So you, to eliminate that, then you would go to, under settings here, uh, sky mask, okay? And you'll see this this red like this. The red is what the camera is recording. So we wanted to deselect some areas, like say the cars are over here, I can just deselect that, and that way it won't see those cars. It won't include those as a, uh, a fireball or a possible fireball. Now you can also, just to save space, you can get, uh, you know, eliminate all this extra out here because that's just going to be the ground or the trees or, or that's actually off the camera so we don't we don't need that we don't need to archive that okay so you can just make it like this and darken all that out okay and then say I have a uh, um, I don't know a tree or something over here that I don't want to film either I can just put a line you know darken all that out too All right, then you would just uh, click OK here. Okay. Now there there is another option like select, select bright areas if you don't want to do all this. I can reset it by going all the way to the left and hit select bright areas. If I only want to select the brightest areas to film, then I can just do that. So you'll only select the brightest areas of my image. So often if, if you just set it somewhere about there and select, It'll get most of the sky. It knows that this area is not bright. And then I can go and I can, um, oops, deselect large and get rid of these areas that I, I know aren't good. Okay. And then these areas I can fill back in. Okay. So that's a quicker way to set it up. Okay. And then you just click, uh, okay. All right. Now, nothing will be on here except the, uh, the, the, RA and deck view of the sky, you'll see the, the blotches there okay, that, that you darkened out. But all the other views will look normal. Okay. It's just when it's trying to detect a fireball that it will uh, block that out and not search in that area. All right, here's the All Sky Cam uh, website. And you can see here's some cameras from around the world. And this is what you can do uh, as well. Uh, let's just click on one, like this one here. And we can see. They've uploaded images from all day today, and 
so uh, these look like they're once every five minutes. So you can see the clouds moving across like that. All right, here's another person's page on the allskycam.com, and here's their you know, standard view. You can see the clouds moving <coughs> about every uh, five minutes or so on this one too. And then uh, you know, here's the panorama, and you can see there's an observatory there. And then here's the uh, all day, you know, every Im an image every five minutes or, or one minute, however they have it set. But you you can tell that you know it's uh, uh, nighttime here, right? And you can tell that there's uh, blue sky here, okay, and maybe some clouds there. So, and when you have your own setup like this, you can click on the different parts to look at that that image from the day. Yeah, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy your new camera. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, concerns, comments, anything, uh, you can give me a, an email at uh, Sean S E A N at moonglow dot com. That's M O O N G L O W T E C H dot com. Or you can go to our, the website as also moonglowtech.com. Thank you, um, and enjoy your camera.